So good day, I'm Guido Kran Randolph and I'll be taking you through how to classify partial differential equations in this lesson. So when you talk about partial differential equation, we know a partial differential equation is a differential equation which has more than one independent variable. So as a result of that, we always have a multivariate function as our solution. And when you are solving it, we have arbitrary functions instead of arbitrary constants. So let's go through the classification. So PDEs can be classified according to the order, whether it's evolution or stationary, linearity and homogeneity. So when it comes to the order, we know the order is the highest occurring power in the PDE. And when it comes to whether it is evolution or stationary, that depends on whether uh, PDE depends on time or not. So if it depends on time, if there is a time component, then we say our PD is evolution. When there is no time component, that if it doesn't depend on time, then we say it is stationary. Then for the linearity, we use the same rules for finding out whether an OD is linear or not. And just for a recap, the rules were that we should make sure our dependence variable does not occur in any transcendental functions. And examples of transcendental functions are the trigonometry ratios like sine, tan, cos, and the ln functions, the exponential functions. Then with the homogeneity, you know, when you consider a PD of the form, so this is a second order PD of the form. So when you consider it of this form and our f of t here is equal to zero, then we say that it is homogeneous. If our f of t is non-zero, then we say it is non-homogeneous. So we are going to use those concepts to classify these PDs. So you realize that with this PD, we say the order is 2 because the highest occurring power here is 2. This is because this particular PD can be written in this form. So it can be written in the form of this. And you realize that our highest occurring power here is 2, so that's the reason why it is of the second order. So also, we said it is evolution because we realize that there is a time component here. So our u here is a function of x and t, so it depends on time, so it makes it evolution. And it is nonlinear because of this u cube here, so you realize that there is a product of the dependent variable, which is multiplying itself three times, and this makes it nonlinear. And it is non homogeneous because our right hand side here is equal to e and not zero. And when you take this second PD, it has an order of two. We just discussed that. It is stationary because we don't have a time component here. Our u depends on x, y, and z. It just has spatial coordinates. It doesn't have a time coordinate here. Then it is stationary because we don't have any time component. We said it. It is linear because all the rules for linearity are satisfied. And it is homogeneous because the right hand side is equal to zero. When it comes to our third question, so with our third PD, we realize that the order is two. It's very simple to find it out. It is stationary because there is no time component. It is nonlinear because of this thing here. So you realize that the u is a dependent variable and it's occurring the transcendental function. So it makes it nonlinear. And it is non-homogeneous because the right hand side here is non-zero. And when you take this particular PD, which happens to be the last PD we're talking about, the order is one because sorry, this one is supposed to be y, okay. So the order is supposed to be one because you realize that the highest occurring derivative is of order one. Then it is stationary because you don't have any time component. It is nonlinear because of this product here. So we see a product of the dependent variable times its derivative. And it is homogeneous because this um, particular PD can be written in the form E subscript X U U X equals E sub Y U Y. So you realize that because this is a derivative and this is a derivative, the right way to write is to bring all of them to the left hand side and when we do that we get zero here so we realize that the right hand side is zero here so it makes it homogeneous even though we had it in this form so thank you that's it with how to classify pds once again my name was Rino Brodio